government officials, business and religious leaders, civil society groups, society's movers and shakers gathered this morning to ask for God's guidance as we work to address the issues facing our country. The National Leadership Prayer Breakfast brought a wide cross-section of Jamaicans together with the same goal, peace, love and prosperity for the nation. Hello, I'm Audrey Williams and you're watching Jamaica Magazine. Coming up in this half hour, under the microscope. We're examining the performance of the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining in 2013. Plus it's Earthquake Awareness Week and you are being encouraged to know your vulnerability to improve your capacity. We start things off with the news, but first, this message. Substituting import crops, supplying the local demand, encouraging consumption of local produce, when we eat what is grown locally by our local farmers, we support them, increase their incomes, and consequently expand the growth of the wider national economy. Exporting more, multiplying fisheries output, and effecting social inclusion. Looking back at the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, watch the review Monday, January 20, right here on Jamaica Magazine. Good day, I'm Samantha Allen and this is your GIS News for Thursday, January 16. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has challenged regional tourism players to embrace competition and become the tourist destination hotspot. While addressing the opening of Caribbean Travel Marketplace 2014, Mrs. Simpson-Miller argued that the region's tourism vision on competition was both narrow and clouded. The vision is narrow because it does not accept that we must compete for primacy of the total product. Most destinations have sea and sun. So to compete effectively, policy must be innovative and strategy must embrace concepts of sustainability as reflected in our tourism, Jamaica's tourism master plan. At the local level, the Prime Minister promised greater successes in 2014 for Jamaica's tourism sector. Crop production in the agricultural sector is expected to grow with the use of Vitazyme, an all-organic biostimulant. By using Vitazyme, which was developed by Health 2000 Agro, farmers should also be able to reduce the input of chemical fertilizers in crops. Speaking at a seminar on Tuesday, Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Roger Clark said the stimulant had been effective in other jurisdictions. This technology has been used by neighbors in Cuba in their sugar industry and tomato and sweet potato production, resulting in a significant increase in productivity. Further afield, it has been tested on rice fields in the Philippines and Indonesia. Minister Clark added that Vitazyme should contribute to the development of the Agroparks project, a major plank of the government's growth agenda. The aim is to increase local food production, reduce imports and increase exports. Jamaica is to benefit from a new state-of-the-art secondary school courtesy of the Republic of Turkey. The country is also exploring the feasibility of donating a hospital to the island. Over the next three days, an eight-member delegation from that nation will be reviewing lands in Ironshore, Montego Bay for construction of the school. The team will also hold discussions with Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites and his staff. The delegation, which is being led by the Governor of Bursa, arrives in the island Thursday evening and departs on Saturday. Bursa is a wealthy industrial province in Turkey with a population of more than 3 million people. The new business registration form, more commonly known as the Superform, has been implemented without many hiccups. Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Company's Office of Jamaica, Shelley Leon, says the main challenge is to ensure people know about the initiative which started on January 2. Apart from this feeling of them having a new form that they must get accustomed to, the overwhelming response from the majority of our customers is why did this take so long to happen? There are persons who actually waited until January 2nd to come here to do their business because they wanted to avoid going to multiple government departments. The Super Form provides a one-stop opportunity for business registration and company incorporation. 
Prime Minister and Minister of Sport Portia Simpson Miller has expressed the sadness at the passing of sports administrator C. Lloyd Allen. Mr. Allen served in a leadership position at many sporting bodies, including the Foundation for Sports of Jamaica, the Boxing Board of Control, Commonwealth Caribbean Lawn Tennis Association, Institute of Sports, and the Jamaica Lawn Tennis Association. Mrs. Simpson Miller says Jamaica has lost one of our finest and most efficient sports administrators whose contribution to the development of sport is on questionable. The Prime Minister has expressed condolences to Mr. Allen's family, friends and the sporting fraternity who mourn his passing. And finally, Jamaica's leaders have been challenged to be courageous while citizens are called to act to bring about the success the country desires. At the 2014 annual National Leadership Prayer Breakfast, Bishop Dr. Delpha Davis said it was time to take the bull by the horn. He asserted that Jamaica needed humble leaders and said the country could only overcome its many challenges if all you to make brand Jamaica one we can all be proud of. Jamaicans need to breathe a sigh of relief in 2014 and beyond. We need to breathe, breathe that sigh of relief from crime and violence, especially murders, road fatalities, from corruption, from cantankerous political opponents from rapacious business operators, from a lukewarm, self-satisfied church, and from all the abominable hacks that remove the pride from us as being a real Jamaican man. After delivering the main sermon at Thursday's prayer breakfast, Bishop Davis prayed for both Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller and opposition leader Andrew Holness. Donations received by the prayer breakfast committee this year will benefit the Committee for the Upliftment of the Mentally Ill, a St. James based charity. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Samantha Allen. Thanks for watching. Show how much you know about the Global Logistics Hub to be established in Jamaica and get the opportunity to win some cool prizes including cash and a trip to Panama by entering the Global Logistics Hub essay competition. If you are between 15 and 35 years, write an essay in 2,000 words or less on the theme Jamaica's Global Logistics Hub, the big opportunity for Jamaica and the world. Essays should be typed using either Arial or Times New Roman font, double-spaced, and include the participant's name, address, telephone number, and email address. Drop them off at the offices of the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, 4 St. Lucia Avenue, Kingston 5, by 2 p.m. on January 17, 2014, or send via email to logistics essay at miic.gov.jm. Call 754-2164 or 754-4719 to find out more. Twenty thirteen was a busy year for the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining. Under the leadership of Minister Philip Polwell, officials did quite a bit of work to facilitate entrepreneurship and business opportunities. Then there were the efforts to find cheaper electricity and initiatives to fuel growth. Here's more. In 2013, the government focused on finding ways to reduce the cost of electricity for Jamaicans, even as it brought more rural communities into the light and into the information age, and pursued prime projects for growth. This was the mandate and the mission of the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining. Twenty thirteen was a busy year for the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, as the administration laid out its strategies to improve the lives and fortunes of the Jamaican people by growing the economy and creating jobs. One huge growth area? Red mud. Early in the year, the ministry acted on plans to tap into the country's red mud resources from bauxite mining activities, positioning the mining sector for major foreign exchange earnings. The commodity that will be extracted 
uh, coins are being traded at rates up to 3,500 US per kilogram. Mr. Speaker, when you compare what we get per ton for our alumina, just about $330, you can see that it is clear that this resource presents an opportunity Jamaica must pursue and which must be managed in such a way that Jamaica and our people benefit significantly. A deal was signed with Japanese company Nippon Light Metals and ground broken on February 4 for the construction of the Rare Earth Elements Extraction Pilot Project Plant. Seven months later, the plant was officially opened and is now in full operation. We have tremendous hope for the realization of a fully commercialized project and we believe that this pilot plant will prove it Research now underway involves the processing of the red mud to extract rare earth elements which are vital in the manufacturing of numerous high-tech products. Decisive steps were taken to realize the 360 megawatt combined energy plant which is expected to reduce Jamaica's oil import bill and provide cheaper electricity for the productive sector. In September, after a formal bidding process, the Office of Utilities Regulation, OUR, named a preferred bidder for the project. But after Azurist Cambridge failed to come up with the 6.9 million US dollar security deposit, the OUR moved on to the next bidder in line, Hong Kong firm Energy World International. With security bond posted, plans are now being finalized for construction of the plant. And while that process was in train, Portfolio Minister Philip Paul well announced announced the 115 megawatt renewable energy project. He said the planned plant would eventually satisfy 12.5% of Jamaica's energy needs from renewable sources. During the year, government also issued close to 120 licenses for net billing, a system where license holders can generate their own electricity, use what they need, and sell any additional power to the national grid. Over $20 million was spent to bring electricity to aid rural communities across the island. The project, which aims to provide a more comfortable way of life for residents, was undertaken by the Rural Electrification Program, REP. Some energy issues at the pumps were also addressed. With the introduction of ultra-low sulfur diesel in June, motorists with newer diesel models breathed a sigh of relief, knowing their vehicles could now operate to manufacturer's specification. And Jamaicans in more places were given access to the internet in 2013. The Technology Ministry opened close to 80 community access points called CAPS across the island to help create a broader knowledge-based society and act as a window to the opportunities created by the Information and Communications Technology ICT sector. Amendments to the Telecommunications Act in the year strengthened the powers of the Universal Service Fund to carry out this function. In 2013, the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining STEM encouraged Jamaicans to draw on their creative genes and come up with innovations in science and technology that would lead to new business and create jobs. STEM partnered with other ministries to execute the Digital Jam 2.0 to teach young people how to develop mobile apps. The King's Stone Animation Workshop to tap into the growing opportunities in the global animation industry, the National Innovation Forum to steer youth into money-making innovations, and startup workshops to provide support for those ventures. Government took action to strengthen legislation to help reduce the global threat of cyber crimes in the island. On October 1, amendments to the Cybercrime Act were tabled in Parliament and later passed. The bill is to be presented to the Senate in 2014. The proposed changes to the legislation mean that under Jamaican law, emerging types of cyber crimes will now be considered criminal offenses, penalties for cyber criminals will be harsher, and the law will be reviewed every five years so Jamaica can stay current. The reality is that as you move more and more of your uh, communications online, as you try to use the internet, there are greater risks that are involved. And we are ensuring as a country that we have both the legislative and regulatory framework, but also the mechanisms to protect ourselves from cyber criminal activity. 
In addition, a cybercrime task force comprising government and private sector players was established in June to create a framework that will facilitate and improve confidence in the use of cyberspace. ICT being a basis for um, improving efficiencies within business is certainly something which is central to what we have to do. With that said, the Ministry spearheaded the introduction of e-government and GovNet projects to centralize the communication infrastructure of all ministries, agencies and departments. It's a paperless system which will reduce operational costs in the public sector by storing information digitally. And as part of efforts to maximize the educational benefits of the digital age, STEM joined forces with the Education Ministry to craft a plan to provide computer tablets for students and teachers at 37 schools island-wide. Procurement for the 30,000 tablets began during the year. Distribution in this $850 million initiative will take place in 2014. The Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, facilitating economic growth, entrepreneurship and business opportunities, improving efficiency, security and living conditions, helping to move Jamaica forward by fueling growth. Bamboo Growers, companies involved in the manufacturing of bamboo products. Get registered with the Bureau of Standards Jamaica. The BSJ is a member of the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan, and the government of Jamaica wants to develop a standard-led bamboo industry that could lead to job creation and economic growth. Companies, your products could be stamped with the regionally recognized Jamaica Made Mark certification and the National Certification Mark. Get registered and receive quality training and international certification. For more information, call the Bureau's Special Projects Department at 926-3140 or visit the BSJ at 6 Winchester Road, Kingston 10. It's been more than a hundred years since the 1907 earthquake, but the lessons we can learn are still very relevant. Disaster officials are now using the 1907 quake as part of a working strategy for a national disaster plan. This week, as we promote earthquake awareness, we explore the issue of preparedness. Monday, January 14, 1907, etched invariably in history as the instant that Kingston was changed forever. About 3.30, the earthquake struck. I saw this building before. Now this is what it looks like. This is what the quake did. Kingston destroyed by earthquake. Let them know what had happened to their city, what had happened to the capital of Jamaica. Just three days after the great earthquake of 1907 struck downtown Kingston, several news headlines painting desolate pictures of the city were being circulated in the international press. Horror and gloom increase. Entire streets leveled and crowds of frightened, shrieking people the lasted nearly 36 seconds. Pillars of smoke rose in Harbour Street, and soon afterwards, flames shot into in the sky. In semi-darkness, 600 bodies recovered, only a few buildings left standing and not one safe. A number of the work that we have been doing in terms of getting the country prepared is, is through public education. One, we have been doing a lot of work with the earthquake unit. They are a significant partner of the ODBEM in terms of looking at seismic vulnerability. We have, we have assisted them with equipment to, to look at the number of 
of, of, of um, occurrences that we have on island. We have over 200 recorded um, tremors per annum. Some are felt, some are not felt. So we are, we are assisting the earthquake unit in terms of putting in seismometers so they can get a better understanding of, of what is happening in terms of seism seismic occurrences. We, we are looking now at having, having um, accelerometers on buildings and we are using a number of critical infrastructure to, to put up these accelerometers so we can get an understanding as to how certain buildings react during an earthquake. So we are ensuring that we have an understanding as to how our critical infrastructure will react so we can make um, preparedness measures, what, what we do in terms of our co future construction for these for our new buildings, what we can do in terms of retrofitting for old buildings so we can ensure that we are in a position to, to respond to, to, to an event. Uh, we have a national resp response mechanism. There is a national disaster plan for which earthquake is a subcomponent and there's an earthquake subplan and, and that outlines all the, the response aspect that, that should have occur. Uh, FIRE is a first responder, ODPEM is a national coordinator. We have, as a part of that, the Ministry of Health, the Jamaica Defence Force, Jamaica Constabulary Force, Mines and, and, and Geology Unit, uh, national works agency so all the players that are involved what what we are working through though is is to have to have um, res um search and rescue search and rescue um, mechanisms in place we have light level search and rescue where where we ha we have been doing training um, assisted by USAID after as it relates to light level search and rescue not only for Jamaica but on a Caribbean a Caribbean wide um, basis what we what we need to work through more in Jamaica and also in the Caribbean is 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 more higher level search and rescue that relates to collapse structure. We are not where we want to be in terms of preparedness, but I think we're getting better. The more we get the information out there, the more sensitized the public is. There's a national building code, although it is still at the legislative um, aspect. But but in in terms of if you look at if you try to equate Jamaica with Haiti. If if uh, if a similar occurrence should happen in Jamaica, yes, there would be some dev devastation. But to where we are in terms of our our building, or we we treat building construction on island, uh, we will not fear similar to Haiti. It's constant work. It's public education. The more aware the public is, the 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 the, the more better able they are to to respond to themselves. Because you try to ensure that that in the homes people know what to do because, because earthquake can happen anytime. It can happen during the day, it can happen at night. Going forward, we, we are encouraging more drills in schools, more drills at the workplaces where, so you get the people sensitized, you get it to become second nature. So people will not panic in an event, but they will actually know what to do to ensure that, that they are relatively safe. So it's, it's constant work going forward. It's, plan preparation, plan preparedness, support for the earthquake unit and, and, and support for our other partner agencies that are a part of the process to ensure that, that in the long run it's, it's a collective good and that we are, we are doing the best we can. I want to wish and tell it. You know me can't find it for a Wait. I know when they know. Watch me, honey. Hey, Chantal, where you at? GIS. No, most you don't know say that the program are the best. Them always the place the where you have progress. I'm here to them there. Don't be now for guess. I'm most Manchester's finest. Hey, hide the remote, no change the station. Cause we soon come back with more information. From the school and the station where you are number one. From the school and the program where you are number one. <laughs> In order to facilitate the smooth delivery of its services, the Passport, Immigration and Citizenship Agency has formulated a Citizens Charter. It's our commitment to providing you, our valued customers, with quality service.
In the Charter, we have given the assurance to process compliant applications for passports within seven days at our head office or 11 to 20 working days at other locations. We also offer expedited service. It is also our promise to process airport passengers within three minutes of arrival at the immigration desk. At PICA, compliant applications for citizenship by descent will be processed within 30 days, while other categories will be processed within 24 to 30 months. Because you see, at PICA, you matter. The passport. Have a good day. Immigration. And citizenship agency. Securing our borders. Safeguarding our sovereignty. In some sense, there's not much that we really can do in terms of keeping the building structure safe. But in terms of like keeping the orchard under the table, standing by the door um, by a strong post or a strong frame, I guess that's the best we can do, keep our children safe and ourselves. I am not prepared. I'll just do the drill, you know, how to come out, standing in the doorway, getting on that table, teaching the children all of that basic stuff. To be quite frank, I doubt I'm prepared, but I know in the event it happens, what to do? The basic, if the tremor should come, I think I know what to do, but to tell you that I have things in place. Why well, just leave it up to God? I'm not going to tell us to be prepared now because I tell us that we can't prepare because we can't be attacked right now and it can't happen just now. And there's nothing we can do. That is an earthquake. It's not like a storm. We can't run a building and cover up and then it's gone. Earthquake just come just so. Well, I'm very prepared this year because, you know, we can go under the table and we can stand behind the door, the columns and those stuff. I needed help to expand my business, but the banks only wanted to be up in my business. The high interest rates were killing my business. They never really business with my business. At the Exim Bank, we have your business needs covered. Our application process is easy, and we provide loans at competitive rates for the productive sector. From renewable energy projects and working capital to plant upgrades or expansion and export financing. Come in and talk to us today. The Exim Bank. On the road to success, you are going to want us in your business. Here's a sneak preview of tomorrow's show. We want to broaden the visitor experience in Kingston in a way that best represents and positions it as a cultural capital of the Caribbean. Increased visitor arrivals, targeted marketing, more benefits for workers and advancements in the entertainment sector. The Ministry of Tourism and Entertainment in 2013. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for more. We say goodbye for now, but the information continues to flow on our website, gis.gov.jm. We also look forward to your comments on Twitter at GIS News or via email, jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Audrey Williams, reminding you to walk, ride, and drive with care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.